This is Algebra 2, Chapter 5, Section 5, in which we will be solving polynomial equations. Now, if you think back to Section 4, 3, we talked about factoring quadratic functions, and then we used the factors to figure out the solutions. The same idea holds true for these other kinds of functions, these higher than second power ones. But for some of them, we're going to need special rules for how to factor. And particularly, the cubes functions are going to be the ones that we have to work hard for. So if I have the sum of two cubes, a cubed and b cubed added together, there's a rule for how to factor it. And it looks like this. It looks complicated, but it's really not. All you have to do is follow the pattern. We have something cubed in front. A is the something that's cubed, so A goes in front. B cubed tells me B goes here, and since it's a plus, we get A plus B for the first factor. Then we'll square the first one, so A squared. Change the sign from plus to minus. Multiply the two terms, A times B always a plus here, and then square the back for the b squared. The difference of cubes, the only thing that's changed is we've gone from adding to subtracting. So in our first factor, we change from add to subtract. And then in our second factor, the front part changes sign from negative to positive. Notice again, the back one is always positive b squared. So in difference of cubes, we get a minus b times a squared. Change the sign to a plus. Multiply the two things, a, b, plus b squared is always at the end. Those are the two patterns that we're going to have to work with on cube problems. What they're going to ask us to do is factor some of these things, if possible. We have to evaluate the problem and see if the rule applies. If the rule doesn't apply, then we can't factor it. We would say it's prime. So let's look at our first problem, 27x cubed plus 8y cubed. 27 is a cube. 3 to the third power is 27. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. x cubed is clearly a cube. 8 is also a cubed. A cubed. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So that's 2 cubed. And y cubed is obviously a cube. So I'm going to apply the sum of cubes rules. What was cubed here was a 3 and an x, so we have 3x plus a 2 and a y makes 2y. Square the front part. If we square 3x, we get 9x squared. Change the sign. Multiply the factors. 3 times 2 is 6 times x times y. Plus, square the back side, 2y. If we square that, we get 4y squared. This second factor over here will very seldom factor from there. You might occasionally run into one that does, but typically speaking, they don't factor from that point. That's as far as you can go. Okay. Let's look at our second case. We have 8y cubed plus 7x cubed. Cubes, cubes, this looks pop promising. It's an addition. 8 is a cube. We just covered that there. 7, though, is not a cube. Okay. There's a way to test these numbers to see if they're cubes. After you've done enough of them, they just become friends to you. You know they're cubes because you're used to seeing them that way. Each calculator has a way to test it but that button is in different places on each calculator, so I will have to show you in class, and I'll be more than happy to point out the button to you and show you how to use it. 
but it's different for each model, so it's going to take a few minutes to do that with you. But 7 is not a cube. Since 7 is not a cube, we can't use cube rules, so we say it's prime. Okay. Let's look at the last one on this type. We have 5y to the 4th minus 320yz cubed. Now, whenever they're telling me to factor, the first thing in my head that I'm thinking about is looking for common factors, something that's in common to everything. I see a y in both places, and I know 5 goes into 320 because it ends in 0. So I'm going to take a 5y out. If I take that common 5y, I'm left with y cubed minus 64z cubed. 64 is a cube. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So I can use the difference of cube rule. The 5y hangs out in front. Nothing changed with that. y is what's cubed in first. Minus 64. The cube for 64 is 4. z cubed gives me z, so 4z. Now, square the first part, so square the y, change the sign, y times 4z is 4yz, you could put 4zy, it wouldn't be wrong. We typically write our variables alphabetically, but it doesn't really matter. And then plus, if we square 4z, we get 16z squared. Okay. So sometimes you have to look out for that common factor. Which leads us to our next kind of problem. They're going to ask us to do some factoring by grouping. So I'm going to look at this big set of terms. And I'm going to group them off into equal size groups. That's the first thing that, that you try. And typically the ones you're going to be given will factor by just looking at the equal sizes. What's in common in the first group of terms? 4 goes into all the numbers, and there's an x for all of them. So I can take a 4x out. 4 goes into 8 two times. The a is still there. The x is gone, so 2a. Plus, the 4 is gone. The x is gone. That leaves b. Plus c, because the 4 and the x are gone. Plus, now I'm looking at the second group. There's a 3 in common to everything, and there's a y in common to everything. So if you take the 3 and the y out, you're left with 2a plus b plus c. Now notice these two terms, these two factors, are identical. Since they have a common factor, I can factor that out. And get 2a plus b plus c times 4x plus 3y, the parts that are left when we take the 2a plus b plus c out of there. You could put this at the back and have 4x plus 3y times 2a plus b plus c. Either way works. It's the same thing. Okay. Now consider our second one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to group these terms together but this one's going to be a little bit more interesting. Look at the first group and what's in common. A 6 and an x. So I'm going to take the 6x out. And if I factor out 6x, that leaves 5a for the first term, minus 4b, plus c. Then I'm going to look at my second term, or second group, and I'm going to look for what's in common, and there's a y squared. Now, here's where the tricky part comes in, where people tend to make a mistake. There's a minus on that first term, so I'm going to take a negative y squared out. Now, when you take that negative y squared out, take the negative and the y squared off of this term, and you're left with just 5a. If you take a y squared off, you get the 4b. If you take a negative off of this positive, that leaves a negative, because negative times negative is positive. 
And if you take negative y squared out of the c, that leaves a positive c because the negative is gone as well. Negative times positive makes negative. Now this is a good touch point, good place to look at things. If these two factors don't match, the odds are you've made a mistake somewhere. Check for that negative and check to make sure you got everything that was in common out. Because if they don't match up, it's usually one of those two situations. Since they do match up, we can take it out, and then it leaves us 6x minus y squared. One last kind of problem they're going to throw at us is they're going to give us some that aren't truly quadratic, but they act like quadratics. And since they act like quadratics, we can use quadratic ideas to work with them. For example, here we have 4x fourth minus 8x squared plus 3. Look at your terms. This middle term is half the power of the lead term. That makes it a quadratic type of problem. It's not a true quadratic, but it's that nature. So we're going to factor it the same way we did when we did quadratics. We need factors of 12 that add to make 8. Factors of 12 that add up to 8 are 6 and 2. Since I need negative 8, I'll need a negative 6 and a negative 2. Now notice the 4 comes down like we've been doing. And since this was x to the 4th, it has to split to x squared and x squared. Okay. Yes, I recognize we could reduce these. Since we're solving, it really doesn't matter. And in the interest of space, I'm going to leave out the reducing step. So 4x minus 6 equals 0. We'll move the 6 over, divide by 4, and then take a square root because we have x squared. Notice we get a positive and negative 1.225. When you take the square root of both sides, you have to give a positive and a negative answer. Then we'll do the same thing with this factor. 4x squared minus 2 equals 0. 4x squared equals 2. Divide by the 4 and take a square root, and we get positive and negative 0.707. Okay. Last problem here, and they're going to throw a little bit of a curveball at us. Remember, we're factoring. And when we're factoring, the first thing I think of is to look for something in common. And when I look, I see a 2 that's common to everybody, so I'm going to pull the 2 out. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about needing factors of 24 that subtract to make 5. Well, those factors are 8 and 3. The 2 stays, just stays on the outside, and again, notice the 4x squared. Okay. The 2 is not going to give me a solution, so I can ignore it. 4x squared plus 8 equals 0. I'm going to subtract the 8 over and then divide by 4 to get to negative 2. And when I take that square root, since it's negative, remember we get an i. Positive and negative 1.414i. The other factor, 4x squared minus 3 equals 0. Add the 3 and divide by 4. And then take that square root, and it's positive and negative 0 0.866. Okay. As always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in to ask, and we will see you in class.